Hey everybody and welcome to another learning statistics with your movie video. In this video we are going to explore how to make decisions based on just categorical data. We've measured two different categories and we are going to try to make some predictions based on that. We're not going to go too far down into the rabbit hole of chi-square tests. I'll save that for another video. But for here we're just going to show how to describe data from two categorical variables. Before we get started by opening some data, I am using the most recent version of 2.2.5 to get us going with this. All right. Let's open up some data. Again, so you can follow along. We are going to use the data library data. Now, I, again, need to make it very clear that this particular set of data library data does need to be installed using the modules function here in Jamovi. So you might be wondering, wait, he's got this LSJ data. Where did he get that LSJ data? That's an important question. So we are going to go here to the Jamovi packages or modules window, and we're going to make sure that we have the LSJ. So to find out what's available, you go to available and you start scrolling down. Unfortunately, this is not in alphabetical order. So we need to, you, you'll just need to scroll. I do recommend installing all of them if you want to. I mean, I installed all of them to explore all of them. I don't know how to do all of them, but I do like it. Here it is. LSJ data, learning system, LSJ hyphen data, learning statistics with Jamovi 1.0.1. This module provides example data sets to accompany the book, Learning Statistics with Jamovi. And this is a link to download it. This is from Danielle Navarro and David Foxcroft. They put these data sets together and they have these so you can download them and add them and add them to your Jamovi data folder. You don't need to do anything special. You just need to click the install button. And you can see that I already have it installed, right? You just need to click that button and boom, you have all of those data sets that I have been talking about in this, in, in uh, this video and, and previous videos that we didn't, um, that we didn't uh, have before because we made, we made up that data. But I wanted to use real data sets that would get us to thinking a little bit more. Okay, so let's open up that data. We go up to the hamburger menu here, and opens up the main file menu. We're gonna go to open, we're gonna go to data library. As you can see, I've been working with this fairly frequently, and so it's there. And what I want you to find is the Chapic 9. Chapic 9, you can see that it's, it's used for chi-squared. We are not gonna talk about the chi-squared part of it just yet. We're only gonna talk about the cross tabs, the cross tabulation table in this video, not to overload you with hypothesis testing or anything like that, just to show you how you can work with two categorical variables. Now, you might be familiar with Chapic 9. Chapic 9 was the name of the planet, the robot planet on Futurama in the first season. The crew has to deliver a package. It turns out the package is full of lug nuts. Uh, but this particular robot ruled planet uh, does not take kindly to humans and actually would would like to kill humans immediately upon seeing them. And so a lot of hilarity ensues. So here we have two variables. We have robot, uh, excuse me, we have species, which is either robot or human. And if we scroll down here uh, to, to find out, we have 180 cases. So we have 180 random humans and robots. And they're asked a simple question. Would you prefer to have a flower, a puppy, or data? And so let's take a look at what these choices converge or how these choices converge into what is called a cross tabulations table. We are going to put species in rows and or columns, and we're going to put choice in either in, in the other way. So if we put species in rows, we're going to put their choice in their columns. So we're going to end up with a two by three cross tabulation table. How we get to the cross tabulation table for two variables is by going to frequency, frequencies, excuse me, not to be confused with the frequency tables that you get in exploration, but frequencies. So we click on that. And here we have contingency tables, and we have two kinds of contingency tables. We have independent samples, which is what we're working with, and this then gives you the chi-square test of association, again, or test of independence, as it is referred to in pretty much everything. <laughs> um, and then you can do the McNamara test for paired samples. We are not going to do that. We're going to do the independent samples one. So we click on that, and what it does is it opens up my contingency tables. We're going to ignore this. So we are, I do, uh, let's see, nope, I want to get rid of, I, I wish you could get rid of tables. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I prefer to get rid of this table, but unfortunately, it's not going to let us just so we can focus on contingency tables. So ignore everything that happens down here for chi-square, okay? All right, now that we're on the same page, what we want to do is we want to take our two variables and we want to put one to rows and the other one into columns. So I think in species, we're going to put in rows. So we have two rows and then we'll have three choices for the columns. So we do that. Now, if you had counts, you would put them here. That's fine. We don't need to worry about that. Some, uh, we don't need to worry about anything else, but we could go into cells and change our observed versus expected counts. I don't want to bog you down with what the contingency table looks like, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as default, which is the observed counts. These are the counts that are drawn directly from the data itself, from the 180 cases that we have in the, data, in the spreadsheet. Expected counts has to do with the outcome of the chi-square test, and so we'll talk about expected counts in another video. All right, so let's take a look at this contingency table. Um, I'll probably make this bigger, so the other stuff gets ignored. So we'll just, we'll just focus on this contingency table, shall we? 
So I don't think I'll use the uh, that. I don't think I'll use that uh, zoomer function there. Okay, contingency tables gives us species on the rows. We have robot and we have human, and we have choice. So puppies, flowers, and data. We get uh, row totals and we get column totals. And down here in the corner, the total row and total columns sum to our case count, 108. Okay, so just to so for everyone recognizes here, these individual six cells all sum to 180. So let's take a look at this. So for robots on Chapic 9, they get a choice. Puppies, flowers, or data. They seem to like data a lot, but also do choose flowers quite frequently. And puppies, not so much. Humans, on the other hand, overwhelmingly choose data. Hmm, that's weird. Very few puppies or very few flowers. Now, the joke that's made in the Learning Statistics with Jamovi book by uh, Navarro and, uh, and Foxcroft is a really funny story about the show itself, which is this is an odd outcome. A lot of data choices, not a lot of puppy or flower. And as a human being, you might be thinking to yourself, man, I'd choose a puppy no, no matter what. But here's the problem. On Chapic 9, as the joke is mentioned in both the show and in the book, maybe the randomly selected human would prefer not to be killed by the murderous robots who are very angry with humans. And so maybe the choice of data gives them a leg up in appealing to the robots. Maybe. Whereas the robots, man, they prefer data, but then they also love flowers. Nobody really likes puppies, which makes me sad. So this is a way, using contingency tables, otherwise referred to in, in programs like SPSS as cross-tabs or cross-tabulation, gives you a count, a very quick count, on comparing two categorical variables together to see how they fit together. Just by counts by themselves, as opposed to means that you would do in a factorial data set or something like that. Just quick counts. And from these contingency table, we can actually do more. We can do the test of independence, which will let us know whether or not these two variables are related to one, are associated with one another, are related to one another, or if they're independent of one another. And we'll do that again in another video. So here is how you get cross tabs. It's just another way to help us describe data by looking at counts. And this is a very clear way to do it as opposed to grabbing that information from frequency tables. A consistency tables or cross-tab tables really just get rid of all of the fluff, get rid of all of the percentages and allow us to look at this information very cleanly. You can add percentages if you want to over here with my percentages and rows, uh, by, uh, percentages by row, by column, or by total. But then as you can see, if I add them, it sort of makes this table a little bit ridiculous. And so we don't want to do that. We can get rid of them. Percent of row, percent of column. It just gets messy. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck those. So we're left with a very clean data set. And then you can also get to see whether or not your car squares. So that's contingency tables or two categorical variables in Jamovi. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please leave those down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. See you later.